We give you all the glory. We give you all the worship, Master. We give you all the praise, Lord. We give you all the praise. Da 
to the name of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Isn't the Lord marvelous? What a beautiful morning in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Just find one or two words and give glory to the name of the Lord this morning. Just praise him, lift him up, glorify him because he's worthy. He is worthy of all the praise. He is worthy of all the glory. There is no one like him. Hallelujah. Just give him one or two words this morning. Just praise him. Just glorify him because he's faithful. He is awesome. Jehovah is his name. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. We want to thank the Lord uh, this morning that he allowed us once again to be here and to glorify his name. Hallelujah. What a beautiful morning in the presence of the Holy Spirit. What a beautiful morning in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Um, I want us this morning uh, to go uh, on our scriptures and open uh, the book of Joshua. Unfortunately, uh, we failed to connect to our Facebook and YouTube. Uh, I'll try to find the problem after uh, the service. Uh, so uh, you can uh, post our link uh, for now. Uh, on Facebook for those that want to join us. Hallelujah. Just post it there. Hallelujah. We will renew it immediately after, after, after the service. So join uh, for our friends and brothers to join. Uh, just post it there. Amen. Just post it there. Let us open our Bibles to the book of Joshua. Book of Joshua. The book of Joshua chapter 1. The book of Joshua chapter 1. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I'm so excited this morning and trusting the Lord on his mercy. Trusting the Lord on his hand upon us. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. As we are opening our Bibles as usual, you know that on Mondays we meet and pray. So just join tomorrow 6 30 p.m. so that we can meet and pray and lift the name of the Lord. These are the times and the seasons that we need to all pray and glorify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I will read from here. Uh, I want to read uh, the 11 verses on the first, on, on Joshua chapter 1. Hallelujah. But I think my theme verse is going to be verse 11. So I'll read uh, verse 1 to 11. Amen. It says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass 
that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river of Ufrit, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall be not any man that, that will be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land I swear unto thy fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayst observe to do according to all the law, which Moses thy servant commanded thee. Turn not from me to the right hand nor to the left that thou mayst prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayst observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass thou the horse and command the people, saying, Prepare your vegetables, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord thy God giveth to you to possess it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you this morning. We have read a common scripture that is known by men. We have read a common scripture that many can interpret. This morning, Lord, I pray that you help me to interpret your words to your people. I pray that, oh God, as this word is going to be shared among us, I pray in the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus, that you touch your people and minister to them. I pray that, oh God, yokes will be broken. I pray that, oh God, your people will be lifted up in the name of Jesus, that your people will experience the glory of the Lord. This morning, Lord, have your way among us. In the name of Jesus, anoint my mind and help my translation that in the event of explaining your hidden matters, of explaining your desire, of explaining your prophecy, of explaining your destiny and our destinies, Lord, it will be crystal clear and also it will be understood. Give us ears to hear and, oh God, even a mouth to speak in the name of Jesus, to speak ourselves to our inheritance in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
Glory be to Jesus. We want to thank the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord this morning. Oh, yes. This is a, a, a very common book that we have read. And I believe many of us, we have heard it. And we have heard many preachers uh, preaching on this uh, book. Why? Because it is a very important book. It is a very important book because it is a transition from the time of Moses to the time of the promise. The promise had been spoken of from the book of Genesis up to uh, the book of Deuteronomy. But there, come, there came a time when the children of Israel were supposed to get into the promise. Hallelujah. We all know that Moses led the children of Israel uh, to pass through the Red Sea. He also led them out of bondage. He also gave them a vision of faith. And also he told them of an inheritance. Now it was time for an inheritance. But let us go back and start the time when this happened. Because this happened at a very peculiar time where you would not expect people to rise up. Because remember, their leader had been taken away from them. So I believe there was sorrow in the camp and there was no comfort in the camp. Everyone was worried how they were going to cross over. Everyone was worried about the capabilities that Joshua could have. I also believe that Joshua himself was not even in the good spirit. Because as human beings, we have got emotions. Imagine Joshua had lost his mentor. He had lost his leader. He had lost a man that had taught him to pray. He had lost a man that had taught him to stay in the presence of the Lord. He had lost someone that was very close to him. Because if you read the word of the Lord, you are going to understand that Joshua was very close to Moses. But in the event of all that, in the event of all the problems, Joshua had the law. Amen. In the event of all the turmoil, something happened. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to preach on a subject that I've entitled, Possess the Land. Possess the Land. I know many of us have heard about this title from many preachers, but I believe today the Holy Spirit is going to help us to understand it even better and with another dimension and the dimension of possessing the land. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 11, the last part. The last part we see a command that is being given to Joshua. And the command is, go into the land. And when you get into the land which the Lord, your God, has given you, you are going, you should go in that you possess it. Yes, the Lord has given you, but now it is your duty to go and possess it. Hallelujah. Yes, the Lord has given you, but now it is now your duty to go and take it. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Yes, the Lord has given you success, but now it is your duty to go and take it. Hallelujah. Yes, the Lord has given you your health, but now it is your duty to go and take it. Yes, the Lord has given you that which you have been praying for. In your prayer, you really understood, you felt that the Lord gave you, but now it is your duty to go and possess it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just tell somebody if they are, you are sitting with someone, if you are alone, just speak it along, you know, and say, you have got to possess it. The Lord has given it. Now it is your duty to go and possess it. Hallelujah. Amen. Joshua is a book of conquest and the battle, and the, the battle of Canaan heritage. It is a book that we see that from the beginning, the Lord is setting the children of Israel on a march. 
He's setting the children of Israel on a move. There are four words that I would want, or phrases that I would want us all to capture. Amen, amen. And the first phrase that I would want us to capture before, be, before I go to the phrase, let me say this. When Joshua was drained out, when Joshua was feeling alone, when Joshua was feeling left out, it is very important to note that the Lord spoke to him. If you go to verse 1, he says, after, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Hallelujah. It is very important to take note that whilst in that mystery, I believe even if Joshua was groaning and grieving from inside, he also took a time to give himself to the Lord. He also took a time to listen from the Lord. He also took a time to prepare a time for him and the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. And now when he had taken that time, that's when the Lord speaks to him. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever we are faced with the calamity, I want us to use the three phrases that God speaks to Joshua in this book. He says on verse number six, be strong and of good courage. I know you have heard it before, but I thought, let me speak about that because somebody might need courage today. Hallelujah. He said again on verse seven, only be thou strong and very courageous. He repeated it again on verse nine, be strong and of good courage. Amen, amen. Let me tell you, as we are walking in the walk of life, there are things that are going to come to try to drain your power. There are things that are going to come to try to make you useless or to try to make you not even speak, to try to make you numb. That's the way that I was looking for. To try to make you nervous, to try to make you even not willing to do more. In the name of Jesus, may May the Lord give somebody courage today. May the Lord strengthen somebody today. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the words that I want you to take note of from verse 2 up to verse, uh, up to verse 5, these are the words. The Lord says, be on the move. Amen. Be on the move. Of course, you have been left out. Of course, you are feeling that something has happened that you didn't expect it, Joshua. But I need you to be on the move. Just tell somebody next to you that be on the move. Be on the move. He says it. I will quote the words that the Lord uses. And when he is quoting that, he uses or he refers to something that he had drained or that he had actually demoralized or frustrated or might have demotivated uh, Joshua. He says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Hallelujah. Moses, my servant, is dead. I want to tell you, I want to tell you something. There might be something that is, uh, that is not going well right now, but I want you to capture what he said. He says, Moses, my servant, is dead. But now, therefore, arise. But now, therefore, arise. Don't keep on down. Now, therefore, arise. And he goes ahead. Go over this Jordan. Hallelujah. Go over this Jordan.
than thou and all this people. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He refers to something that could have demotivated him. Something that could have harmed his thinking. But he says, do not dwell there in the land where Moses has died. Oh my God. I need you to move over. Hallelujah. Just tell somebody that be on the move. Be on the move. Hallelujah. Yes, you might have tried it, but it failed the first time. But it didn't mean that you have got to stop there. You should be on the move. Yes, you might have tried it and it did not give you a result, but it didn't mean that you have got to stop it there. But I want to tell somebody, be on the move. Be on the move. Don't stop there. Be on the move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. And on the verse 3, on the verse 3, he says, or he talks of an action that happens when someone starts to be on the move. He says, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto you. Hallelujah. That have I given unto you as I said unto Moses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to understand something here. Hallelujah. I want you to see a picture that the Lord is portraying here. He's saying that I gave you, but you have got to go and possess it. I gave you, but you have got to move and possess it. I gave you, but you can't remain here where I gave you. I literally gave you, but you have got to go and take it. And listen here, when he says go and take it, says the land that you are going, it has got Hittites in it. Be strong and courageous. When you see the Hittites, do not be like those other 10 in the book of Numbers, that when they went to see the land, fear struck them. But just be like what you did, Joshua and Caleb. Be of courage. Remember, I have only saved the three of you. I have saved yourself. I have saved Caleb. I have saved Eliezer. And I have saved you for a purpose. The purpose that I have saved you and this young generation that you have is that you go and possess it. The purpose I said, the, 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 the reason I said you. It's because of your positive confession. The reason I saved you is because of your words. The reason I saved you is because of the way that you speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Peter says, I want to read the, the book of Peter. I want to just use that verse from Peter. Hallelujah. It should be First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, and that should be verse 10, if I am okay. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 3. I'll quickly run with you there. Hallelujah. It says, it says, verse 10, it says, For he that will love life, and he see good days. Let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Amen, amen. I want you to grasp the word that is saying, let him refrain his tongue from evil. If you go to the book of Psalms, chapter 34, let me jump there. The book of Psalms, chapter 34, there is a verse that I like. There is a verse that shows the David's prayer to the Lord. There is a verse because David is in the midst of running away from Saul. But whilst running away from Saul, there is a verse that I like where he prays about his mouth and his lips. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
and he says, I will read it here. Oh my Jesus, oh my Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Oh my Jesus. He says, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord and the humble, humble, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Hallelujah. Together, I sought the Lord. Verse 4. I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord. And he had me and delivered me from my fears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what I sought, he's saying, I sought the Lord and he delivered me from my fears. Now listen to what he says in verse 18. Verse 18, he says, keep thy tongue from evil. Keep thy tongue from evil. Thy lips from speaking guile. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Every word you speak in your word, in your life can manifest. Hallelujah. Just tell somebody, be careful of what you speak. Be careful of what you speak. Hallelujah. Be careful of what you say. Be careful of how you talk. Amen. So he says, set your foot down. The first word he says, he says, be on the move. When you are on the move, set your foot down. Don't move it until you possess. Ay, 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 ay. You know, when you hear the word, set your foot down. Set your foot down. It means declare, decree, proclaim that it's yours. My God, my God. He says, every place that your soul shall tread upon, every place that your soul shall tread upon, I have given you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have given you as I said to Moses. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. So he says, set your foot down. Hallelujah. Set your foot down. The book of Joshua, it relates to the settlement of the children of Israel in Canaan proving God's faithfulness in keeping his promise with Abraham. Hallelujah. God yet made a promise in the book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, and the promise was, I'll bless thee. Oh my God, I am tempted to read it because there is power in the word of God. There is power in reading the word of God. Even in this book that we are reading, he says, meditate upon this word each and every day of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us read it. Let us read it from Genesis chapter 12. I need verse 1 to 3. Oh my God, you have got a promise according to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. You have got a promise according to the book of Genesis, chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. I need to read the promise that, that the Lord has given to your life, that you can possess it, that you can keep it and declare it upon your life and declare it upon whatever is happening in your life. He says in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, he says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, get thee out of thy norm, get thee out of thy kindred and from thy father's house. When you get out, I want you to go to a land that I shall show you. My God and my master, I have got people that, that were shown many things with the Lord. And some are wondering, why are we not possessing it? Why are we not getting there? Oh, just wait for a minute. I will be with you soon. In the name of Jesus, when he says, go, to that land that I will show thee. He continues on verse 2, he says, and I will make thee great. 
I'll make thee great, a great nation. I'll bless thee, make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. He continues and says, and I'll bless them that bless you. I'll curse them that curse you. Oh my God, were you worried about anything in your life? Do not worry. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. He continues and he says, in thee shall all families of the earth, not of Israel, not of anything, because Israel was not yet there. He says, of all the earth shall be blessed. And remember, he is getting this promise before his name is changed from Abram to Abraham. <laughs> you have got a promise. And in that promise that you have, all that you need to do is to wait upon the Lord. All that you need to do is to continue moving on. All that you need to do is to set your foot down. When the Lord said, nobody shall set me from it. When the Lord said it, nobody shall move me from that. Oh my God, hallelujah, hallelujah. So he says here, he says, every place that the soul of thy foot shall tread upon, that I, given, I have given unto you, as I said to Moses. Number three, number three, number three, very important. He says, take it off. Just say to somebody, take it off. Let me read it for you. It says, from the wilderness of this Lebanon unto the great river of Ufraj, all the land of the Hittites, unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your cost. He says, take it off. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, take it all. Take it all. Take it all. You have got to take it all. There is nothing that you have got to leave because you are greater. Oh, man, tell Abayakaya. The word of the Lord says, greater is he that is in you. It is time for the manifestation of the sons of God. I decree and declare somebody has got to stand tall in the prayer. Somebody has got to stand tall on they are need to pray unto the Lord, breaking yokes, breaking boundaries, no limitations. In the name of Jesus, refuse any limitation in your life. Start to decree and declare and take it all. If the Lord gave it to you, you have got to possess it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, take it all. He says, take it off. Hallelujah. And he continues, he says, when you take it off, there's something that I want you to do as well. I also want you to do something. I want you to take the sword with you. Because when you are going to go, you are going to be discouraged. You are going to meet things that will drain your power. You are going to meet things that will try to threaten you. You are going to meet things that will try to frighten you. But I want you to remember, Joshua, you need to take your sword. He says in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8, he says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Oh my God, let me explain something that I had to put aside for a moment. Moses came with the law, but Joshua is coming with the grace. 
Moses came with the law, but Joshua is coming with the grace. And the reason Moses could not cross over into the promised land, because the law would not help in possessing. The Lord would only guide to the land, but not help in possession. But the grace was supposed to help. Ladies and gentlemen, all the name Joshua means Yeshua. The name Joshua means Jehoshua. It means the minister of God, the servant of God. It means uh, the deliverer or the salvation of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, yes, you might have been going through some things. I have come here to decree and declare that you are about to take it all in the name of Jesus. All that you need to do is to carry the sword of the Spirit according to the book of Revelation. He says, this book of the law, this book of the law, ladies and gentlemen, we are so much blessed than Joshua because Joshua had only five books in his possession he had the book of Genesis. He had the book of Numbers. He had the book of Exodus. He had the book of Leviticus. He had the book of Deuteronomy. My God, because the book of Joshua itself was written by Joshua and ourselves. We are so much blessed. We have got 66 books in the Bible. Oh my God. The Old Testament the New Testament. You are undefeatable in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, no weapon for against you shall prosper. Every time that rise against you, we condemn. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is there anybody here that is saying, Pastor, I am ready Ready to go and possess it all. Of course, fear had struck me. What is that struck me? But now I know. I am moving over to possess. I am going to take it all when I get there. The devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking for men and women that are ready to go and possess it. It might be whatever you have been praying for. It might be the possession of the Holy Spirit. I need you to go and possess it. I need you to start to march over in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He says, take the sword. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So first thing he says, be on the move. When you are on the move, I want you to set your foot down. When you set your foot down, I want you to take it off. When you take it off, I want you to take your sword with you as you are going on the move. Hallelujah. Just tell somebody, when last did you read the Bible? When last did you meditate upon scriptures? When last did you pray? Just say the pastor is saying, take the sword. Don't leave the sword of the spirit. Keep the sword of the spirit. It is everything that you want. When you've got the sword of the spirit, you can conquer any devil. You can conquer any army. You can conquer anything. My God and my master, the Bible tells me when I take the sword, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. May the Lord raise your faith today that when you leave this service, you have so much hunger to read the word of the Lord because in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word came among us and it lived among us. It was light unto men. Darkness could not comprehend it. Nothing was made except that which came from the word. The book of 
Hebrews tell me, oh, by faith, we can get it. It tells me that faith now is, is the believing of things that are not seen, as if they are there, because by it, the elders obtained a good report, because the world that we see was made from things that do not exist. The book of Romans tell me, in the name of Jesus, that the faith, the faith, the faith that we are talking of, is determined only by this word. My God, are you looking for faith? Go to the word. Take a detour to the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When last did you read your Bible? When last did you read scriptures? Hallelujah. The fifth thing that he says, <laughs> I like this one. I like this one. I like this one. I like it. But before I say, I, I, I talk about that one. He says, let me say that's the sixth thing that I want to talk about. Let me put another fifth thing there. Hallelujah. He says, no man can stand against thee. You need to know as a Christian that no man can stand against thee. Let me repeat, repeat this words. You need to know as a Christian that you are spiritual and you are unstoppable. You can end in any place. You can change things that are not changeable in the name of Jesus. You need to know as a Christian that when you speak words, they become life. When you speak words, they start to exist. That's why I said, be careful of what you say. Be careful of what you say. Hallelujah. You are greater than what you see. You are greater than what you believe. Because you are fierce. And wonderfully made. My fellows are the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he says, no man. No man. And you know when he says no man, he gives a promise there. He says, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Were you feeling forsaken? The Lord has sent me to tell you that he loves you. The Lord has sent me to say that even when you are down, when you are weak, that's when you are strong. All that the Lord is expecting from you is that you can start to speak like what Joshua. He says, Moses, my servant, is there. You know, there is a characteristic that I learned from the Lord. And you know, I zoomed myself to the account in the book, in all the four books of the gospel, when he feeds the five thousand. I saw that when he fed the five thousand, it was after he had received the message about John the Baptist that he was no more. When he sought to rest, when he sought to rest, when he sought to go to a lonely place with his disciples, when the five thousand followed him to that place, it was after receiving a message about John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a cousin to Jesus. John the Baptist was the evangelist to Jesus. So he wanted a quiet 
time. Just say I'm ready. Hallelujah. Hey, you wanted a quiet time. You wanted a quiet time to praise the Lord. You wanted a quiet time to sob. You wanted a quiet time because Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. So he wanted a quiet time. But when the people followed him, oh my God, the Bible said he had compassion on them. He had mercy on them. Though he was being troubled in his spirit, oh, look unto him when he went to the house of Martha and Mary just after Lazarus has passed on. He had the compassion on them. And when he had compassion on them, he asked his disciples. So in asking his disciples, there are three things that I saw recently that are hidden there. He shows the reaction of men and the reaction of God. And the reaction of men is when the disciples saw that it was time that was getting in the evening and there was no food and they were in the desert and in the desert, there is no bakery. In the desert, there is no food. The disciples showed a characteristic that all human beings have. They want to do away with it. They, they want to abscond. They don't want to be part of the misery. So, in that Jesus, when he sees the characteristics of the disciples, he says, what do you have? And the disciples say, we don't have anything. He shows the second characteristic, that the people have got a tendency of giving up. When they get to a point where they don't have a solution, and not only do they give up, they've also a tendency of becoming self, mm. of looking at themselves only. Let me check for you. When they give up. Hallelujah. They've got a tendency of, 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 of forgetting. They've got a tendency of forgetting okay. that they are supposed to help others. They've got a tendency of forgetting uh, uh, to know that they are supposed to, to, to stand with others. They've got a tendency to forget that they are supposed to, to do something. Then Jesus shows the third thing. He shows the third thing that when you are at the end of your rope, there is a solution. So he says, is there any bread among us? And there was a young man to cut the long short story. And the young man had the five loaves. He prayed for it and they distributed. He didn't distribute. He asked the disciples to distribute. To know that the supernatural, you've got power over the natural. Hallelujah. And when they had done that, he said, collect the basket to show that when he provides, there will be excess. There will be left over. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that the Lord has not forsaken you. The reason I'm giving this account of the 5,000, I want you to know that even when he was tired, even when he wanted a lonely time, he fulfilled the scripture which says he neither sleeps nor a slumber. He fulfilled the scripture that is always watching over us. And he fulfilled the scripture that you will not forsake us. And I want you to know, in that situation, 
you are not forsaken. You are not forsaken. You might have felt that you are troubling the Lord. You might have felt that you are putting a lot of burden on him. But let me tell you, he is waiting for that. He's saying, bring it all. I am here for you. Bring it all. I want to make sure that you are enlightened. I want to make sure that you are free. Because I came to set you free indeed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So he says, you will not be forsaken. No man can stand against thee. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about, it is that go in for a full life. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> go in for a full life. And I'm going to conclude my message on here. He says, go in for a full life. And I'll read verse 11. He says, I'll read part of it. He says, within three days, you shall pass over this Jordan. With the resurrection power, you shall pass over this Jordan. And he says, to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you and he gave you to possess it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He gave you to possess it. So he says, go in for a full life. Remember, move be on the move. When you're on the move, set your foot. When you set your foot, it doesn't mean there are no troubles or problems that are going to rise. But keep your foot down. Set your foot down. And when you set your foot down, take it off. When you take it off, don't forget you are still on the move. And because you are still on the move, you need to take your sword. Keep the sword. Move with the sword. And with the sword, I want you to know two promises. There shall not be any man that shall stand against thee. And I also need you to know another promise that you are not forsaken. I will not forsake thee. Hallelujah. Now when you get in, get in for a full life. Hallelujah. Just tell somebody that I am getting in for, for a full life. Whatever the devil took away from me, whatever has been happening in my life, I am going for a full life. I am praying right now. Whatever you have been trying to convince me otherwise, in the name of Jesus, I pull it down in the name of Jesus, because I decree and declare that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, ladies and gentlemen, I am looking for some people that are saying, Pastor, you are speaking to me. There are some areas that I had stopped and I have come here to say go for a full life a full life in everything a full life in the spirit if you are telling me but I am having fearful dreams go for a full life I pull down those dreams and start to pray that you devil you are a liar and when you pray and you see tomorrow you have yet another fearful dream do do not stop. Pray again. In the name of Jesus, the Bible tells me, greater is he that is in me than the one that is in the world. Don't stop there. Continue praying. Ah, like in the book of Isaiah, no weapon fought against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me, 
die in your name. Don't stop there, continue. Oh, like the book of Colossians, which says in chapter 2, verse 14, oh, he plotted every handwriting that was against me, and it stamped it over everything. Go for a full life. Hallelujah. 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 You need to go for a full life. You don't have to go half in and half out. I am looking for somebody that is going to go for a full life. I am looking for somebody that is going to go for a full drive. That is not going to take it half time. I am looking for somebody that is saying I'm I'm not going to give up. I am going to keep the three phrases after keeping the seven words that the pastor has told me about moving on, about setting my foot down, about taking it all, about knowing that the Lord is on my side, about knowing that the Lord will not forsake me, about knowing that no man shall stand against me about also knowing that I need to take my sword, about also knowing that I need to go for a full life. I am not going to go half in my brothers. I am not going to have go half in my brothers. Let me tell you something. There is a man in the world, of, in the world. Uh, his name is Nehemiah. Nehemiah thought and decided in his heart he was going to build the walls of Jerusalem. And when he went there, he met some situations that were telling him to do a half job, that was telling him to do a half done job. That devil is a liar. You are not such a person that is going to do a half job. You are going to go for a full life. The Bible says says there are some people by the name of Tobiah and his friends they started inviting him down and there is a word that Nehemiah says he says I will not leave this place I will not stop what I am doing and it comes down to you and waste my time I want you to start to speak to every demon to every devil that you every hindrance everything that he has been feeling in your life that say, I am not going to compromise. I am coming for full life, full life in the spirit, full life physically, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Go in for a full life. You know, Nehemiah finished building the walls of Jerusalem. He finished build, building in the walls of Jerusalem because he made it. Hallelujah. When you put your foot down, you mean it. When you put your foot down, you are not going to take any other way. Yes, the pastor might come to you and say, you know, it has happened. Come down, my brother, my sister. I want you to say, not to me. The devil is a liar. I am going to claim that which belongs to me. I am going to pray for that which belongs to me. In the name and the blood of Jesus, is there somebody that is here that was the feeling being left out? Oh, I have come here, my brother. Go in full time. The Lord is not going to forsake you. The Lord is going to stand with you. No man shall stand before for thee all the days of your life as the Lord was with Moses so shall he be with you remember I said Moses represented the law but Joshua represented grace the reason Moses did not cross over because the law was always coming
coming in and is showing your failures, showing your incapabilities. But grace says you can. Grace says you are able. Grace says no weapon fight against you shall prosper. Grace says you are an overcomer. Grace says greater is in he that is in you than the one that is in the world. Go in full time. You don't need to go half. You don't need to do a half job. In this somebody that is saying, Pastor, you are speaking to me. Yes, I have come with the message. Go and you possess the land. Remember the word of the Lord said, the land that you are going to get into, it has got heat in them. But I have have given you the land. All that you need to do is to go and possess the land. Now, as I finish now, chapter 2, when you read it, Moses sent some spies, and when those spies, the two spies, this time, he didn't send it home. He sent two. Because he knew that it's not in numbers. It's not by might, it is by the Spirit. And when he sent the spies, they went to the house of Rahab. And the Rahab is a prostitute. Because now we are getting into a, 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 a grace dispensation time. I want to show you that even when you could not, I can do it for you. And the Bible says, when they went to Rahab, the, prophet, the, the prostitute, it happened that the seed knew that there were some spies that had come to Rahab's house. And when they came to attack them, the Bible tells me that Rahab hit them on top of his roof. And when he hit them on top of his roof, the Bible tells me that the only way they escaped, they escaped through a scarlet, and the scarlet was hanging on the window. A scarlet is a red thread that was hanging on the window, and that red thread that was hanging on the window, it was representing the grace of God in the name of Jesus. Rahab himself had said, remember me when you come here that you can also save me when you destroy the city. But there is a message that the spies had when they went to the city. They heard that all the people in Jericho, which is the first stronghold that they were supposed to conquer, were fearful. They feared Israel because of the hand of the Lord that was upon them. Let me tell you, things that you fear, they fear the Lord Almighty. In the name of Jesus, they fear the Lord Almighty. Take it all. You need to say, Lord Jesus, be into my life. You need to say, Lord, guide my life. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, they escaped by the scarlet because when we are in the grace dispensation, when we are in time of grace, the blood of Jesus speaks better things. My God and my master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Moses led you, but this time, Faith is going to lead you. Yes, Moses taught you inheritance, but this time I want to teach you something. In the name of Jesus, I want to teach you something that you are going to pass over River Jordan. And when you pass over River Jordan, I want to teach you something that with the 
in Joshua, Israel is going to be blessed. It's going to be different from the time of Moses because Moses took them from bondage, but he did not take them to the blessing. But he God, but Joshua is taking them to the blessing. Let me tell you, Jesus is taking you to your blessing. Jesus is taking you to your blessing. I want you to say hallelujah. Jesus is taking you to your blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, Moses gave you a vision of faith, but I am not going to give you a vision of faith. I am going to make Joshua lead you by faith and lead you to the life of faith. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you about the faith. It comes through the word. I want you today that you can Grab your Bible, start to dust it, just like Josiah did. He dusted the book in the time of the priest Hilkiah. When he dusted the book, he started meditating upon it. When he meditated upon it, he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord gave him victory. He says, somebody that has got a Bible home, I need you to take your soul when you take your sword, go in for full time. In the name of Jesus, the devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, ladies and brethren, I pray today that somebody should stand up and start to move on, to move on to the promise said to move on to the promise. When you get to the promise, put your foot down. Take it all. When you take it all, possess it all. Don't get in just a half time. Get in a full time. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to Jesus. 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 Paul says it, it is not of works, lest any man boast. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 9. It is by the Spirit, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to start to pray, regardless of what you are feeling. I want you to start to pray, regardless of what is around you. Our God is a miracle working God. I want you to start to glorify the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus. I want you to start to pray. Start to pray regardless of what you are feeling. Just speak those words. You are going to start speaking slowly, but you are going to see as you start to speak. Your tempo is going to change. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you went told me, I'll curse those that will curse you. I'll bless those that will bless you. My master and my God, the Lord that forgives our sins. As I pray today, let there be miracles in our meetings. Some they were feeling drained. Some they were feeling, oh God, giving up. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, the power of the Lord to take over. All that you need to do is to move over. Let me tell you, when Elijah started praying, there was no rain yet. But when he started praying, it is on the seventh time that he saw a cloud that looked like the hand of a man. All that you need is to continue praying until a cloud appears. Do not stop. Ayakadayama 
Because when you pray, you pray unto the Father. You don't pray unto men. When you pray unto men, you get tired. But when you get, you pray unto God, you will not get tired. Yes, 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 you might be saying, yes, no, yes, pastor, I have been looking out to men so that they will see change in my life, yes, stop looking out to men, look one to Jesus, the order and the finish of our faith. Hallelujah. Look unto Jesus. 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 Yes, look unto Jesus. And say, I am ready for service. I am ready for service. I am not going to give up. I am ready for the new role. I am not going to give up. I am ready to overcome. I am not going to give up. I am ready to conquer. I am not going to give up. If there is somebody that is saying, Pastor, you were speaking to me, I want to encourage you to make this prayer. If you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, in the name of Jesus, I want to lead you in this prayer. Just say, Lord Jesus, I pray today that you will be the Lord and Savior of my life. In the name of Jesus, Lord, forgive all my sins. I come into your grace. I come, oh God. I I pray that your Holy Spirit today will baptize me inside out, outside in. I want to be soaked fully in you, Spirit of the living God. Holy Spirit, I need you like never before. There are times that I had given up, but today I pray that I will not give up. There are times that I had given up, but today I I pray that I will not give up. There are times I have given up, but today I continue fighting the fight of faith in Jesus' name. Remember, remember, he has said, no man will be able to stand against him. Remember, he said, he's not going to forsake me. Hallelujah. So many times I've seen this word in the way, in the Bible. I will not forsake thee. Oh, Jesus. The Lord. Oh, Oh, thank you, Lord. Just receive it in your life. The Lord loves you. He will not forsake you. Yes, people around you made you to believe that you are forsaken. You are not forsaken. I need you to look unto my eyes. You are not forsaken. You are not forsaken. Oh, Jesus. You are not forsaken. I pray for you. Every rejection that you have been feeling in your life. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Every rejection. Rejection from people. Rejection from the Lord. I've got the word of the Lord. And the promise of the Lord is. He will not forsake me. We are not forsaken. As I am praying, I deeply feel inside me that there are some people connected here that feel forsaken. Wherever you are, lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. 
Lord, I pray. Lord, I pray for your mercy and grace and for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let this spirit stop here. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you so much for joining today. But like always, I want to us to leave this time to go into prayer. So that we pray, don't leave. I've got some few announcements for next week, Saturday. Don't leave, and I need to make those announcements. But just take this time to pray. Pray about your life. Pray about your destiny. And remember, no man shall be able to stand before thee. Pray it out. Pray it away. In the name of Jesus. I asked him, come and go to play from uh, behind some instruments. Rebo sandala bayaka. Re raba sonderi abanere. Oh raba ya neli abasano. Re raba sondoro bosi andarabayana. Oh Jesus, we give you glory. Re raba sondori abahandarabayana. Oh re raba sondori abahandarabayana. Just pray, just pray. Re raba sandarabayana robos. Re raba kahandari abasano. Just go before him with his way. Tell him that you are telling me that I'm not forsaken. Yes, Lord, I pray that whatever thing is to stop today. Pray that this there will be a new feeling in your life. Pray that there will be a new feeling of the Holy Spirit in your life. In the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 my brother. Pray, my sister, my sister, my mother, pray. Pray, 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 pray. Oh, Jesus, we give you all the glory. We give you all the worship. We magnify your name today. You gave me a word to say go and possess it. I pray that your children that are listening to me. Now, Lord, whatever they've been trying to possess. Amen. Whatever they've been trying to possess, I pray for a miracle to happen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. 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 Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Possess it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to Jesus. Don't forget what we shared today from the book of Joshua. Get it. I will repeat it for you so that you can grasp it. Hallelujah. I will repeat it for you. Hallelujah. The first one, verse 2, it says, be on the move. Let me start from verse 1. Verse 1, the first one that is there, God is telling us that he has given it to us. Hallelujah. And now it's our duty to go and possess it. Hallelujah. Verse number 2, he tells us that be on the move. Hallelujah. Verse number 3 says, set your foot down. Set your foot down. Verse number three. And verse number four, it says, take it off. Take it off. Verse number five, it says, no man can stand against thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse number six, seven and eight and nine, it says, in the event of possession, you need to possess the courage that you are supposed to have. Be courageous, be strong. You need to be strong and you need to be courageous because I have given you this land. You are going to possess it, but you are in a battlefield. 
as a Christian. And in that battlefield, you need to be on the move. Amen. Verse number nine, he says, you need the sword. You need to take the sword with you. You need to take the sword to be in courage. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. And on verse number nine, he says that, and he makes sure that you are prosperous, but you can only be prosperous through the word because on verse nine is very elaborate that when you meditate upon the word, you are going to be successful in verse eight. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse number 11, it says, I have commanded you to go in for full life. I have commanded you to go in for full life. Amen. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Next week, we are going to uh, have a revival. Hallelujah. Those that love a revival, can you just give an amen? Hallelujah. You can give an amen. Just give an amen. Hallelujah. Those that love a revival. Amen. Amen. We are going to have a revival next week. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll be making our flyers very soon. Amen. Hallelujah. We are going to have a revival. I spoke to Apostle Mary. He says, yes, I can come and preach on your Zoom uh, on Saturday. Amen. Hallelujah. So Saturday, just to get ready for some fireworks that will be happening. Amen. Just get it ready. Come prepared. Expectation is the breeding ground for a miracle. So just come prepared and just come expecting. Amen, amen. We'll be having Apostle Mary and our time will be from six o'clock, six o'clock to seven. Amen. From six o'clock to seven. Uh, from their time there, six o'clock to seven, uh, we are looking into almost midnight there. Amen. That will be almost right there, midnight, because I've got a difference of five hours. The service might prolong, so that which means even during the midnight, you'll be preaching here. So just get ready. Just get ready. Just get ready. And they spread the news. Uh, when the flyers are sent around, send them everywhere so that we have a time to be blessed. Amen, amen. And this Friday also, we are going to have our family platforms this Friday. Amen. So come expecting for the family platforms. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. God bless you so much. God anoint you. May the Lord do many things in your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See you again. I'll ask Koma Godi to play uh, in the background for those that want to uh, pray in our meetings. You can pray. Uh, if you want to talk, you can talk. Uh, I believe this far the Lord has taken us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. <laughs> Who is this man? 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 Who is this